Great. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on what time of the day this presentation is going to be. I am Maya Thanu and I'm a reader in nanotechnology, in innovative nanotechnology at King's College London. But I am also a trustee for the British Society for Nanomedicine, an exciting society that I would strongly invite you to be part of. Uh, it is a dynamic group of people that uh, aim to bring nanoparticles, novel therapies in uh, the clinic. So I would like to thank uh, my society, of course, the British Society for Nanomedicine. I would like to thank Bifol Pharma for organizing the symposium, for helping us. And uh, uh, the, this opportunity, the Clinical Pharmacy Congress, to give us the opportunity to transfer to you our opinion of nanomedicine and what we think this exciting field will be in the future. But today I'm going to talk to you about the nanoparticles that they are in the clinic, that they are of course related to, uh, to my research, doing research for cancer. What kind of nanoparticles have reached the, the clinic for cancer? What are the successes? What is now in clinical trials? What are their capabilities? and uh, a bit some comments about the future and uh, it's i will keep it very simple uh, just to avoid a lot of science or a lot of complicated science jargon behind uh, the um, in this interdisciplinary field of nanomedicine and i will just highlight the important thing what i, I believe mainly the uh, clinical pharmaceutical scientists have questions and we will try to address them. So one of the major um, highlight of the last years is that nanomedicine is making it to everyone. It is the mRNA vaccines that everybody learned about and uh, worried about well, first of all, they are not microchips. They are just lipids, like the lipids they are in your uh, cell membranes. And in fact, is the mRNA vaccines is the revenge of the nanomedicine, is the revenge of uh, liposomes, which were the first nanomedicine. Um, for several years, people were reluctant on adopting the nanomedicine, on adopting the liposomes in the clinic and their advantages. But recently, and maybe because by force, uh, people ha are accepting that. So mRNA vaccines uh, are just liposomes. They are uh, lipid, phospholipid enclosures. Uh, the phospholipids are forming mainly a bilayer, yeah, and they make a small bubble. And the drug usually can go in the core or it can go also in the lipid bilayer. If it is hydrophilic, drug likes water, goes in the core. If it is hydrophobic, like lipid, goes in the bilayer. And they are very versatile because we can decorate them with antibodies so we can have them the immune liposomes, looking for the, what to see them in the clinical practice. Uh, but we need to have a poly, polymer around it to avoid the reticular endothelial system. And in fact, in simple words, we, have, we need to have this polymer to avoid the clearance by the liver. Okay, if with a little bit of smart chemistry, then we can make them go and deliver the drugs where they're supposed to do. To do. So, but what are the mRNA vaccines? They're similar to liposomes, but they are, have a little bit different composition. So in other words, some of the vaccines have uh, the uh, mRNA within the uh, lipid, small lipid cores and encapsulated by another lipid around it or some others they have this so-called sandwich model where the lipids and are uh, sandwiching the mRNA uh, which is part of RNA structurally and uh, they are encapsulating it and protected. So for the mRNA vaccines to work this mRNA needs to be protected by the um, enzymes in the body. So this is why they're encapsulated in liposomes. And because RNA is anionically charged, we introduce cationic lipids, slightly different. We don't have it in our cellular membranes, but we introduce a cationic lipids in order to have a very good um, encapsulation. So this is actually the mRNA vaccines from the um, that they are now injected in the arms of several billions of people. 
So the mRNA vaccines, uh, they do have certain lipids and uh, they have the cationic lipids that it is abbreviated uh, differently in Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. They both have um, a polyethylene glycol lipid and uh, they both have the bulk lipid. So in a nutshell, these type of uh, lipids in the mRNA vaccines, they would have this type of structures chemical structure, just a refresh on the chemistry. So the cationic lipids, which are in the very small proportion, they encapsulate the mRNA and the PEG lipids decorate the vaccines to give them more stability. The rest is just bulk lipids and cholesterol. It's like the fat that we, find, it's, we can find in our body. So very simple technology, and but it is saving lives at the moment. Um, but it was not only the first RNA liposome. The first RNA liposome that got approval was from um, Alnylam, and it is uh, Patisiran. It is now a small interfering RNA, a different RNA technology. And Patisiran was approved recently uh, for hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis. Uh, similar to uh, mRNA vaccines, it's composed of cationic lipids and PEG lipids, and it is targeted to go to the liver so it can silence the effect, the protein that makes this unfortunate disease, this hereditary disease. So now these people can live and without needing to, uh, to be treated all the time. So sRNA is uh, patisiran or otherwise on patras, it was approved, delivers small interferon RNA that gets into the cell membrane, through the cell membrane into the cell. And it interacts with certain complexes and of course silences the mRNA that is responsible to produce this damaged protein. So if it silences the production of a protein, then the, we don't have a disease. Again, another successful example of nanomedicine that went a little bit unnoticed by the news. Um, Onivite is another liposomal drug, again, uh, for cancer. Onivite was approved uh, a few years ago, back in 2017, and it contains 80,000 molecules of salt irinotecan. It is enclosed by a lipid bilayer. Again, it's a liposomal, and it is for pancreatic cancer. Irinotecan has been shown to improve substantially the treatment of 5 fluororecinal leukovorin and gives up to 3.5, 3.1 months extra life in pancreatic patients that unfortunately they, are, um, they can't be treated. But improving the uh, life expectancy and the quality of life is quite important and gives the advantage of, of uh, improving these treatments in the future. Uh, Nampaclitaxel has a better success story because it's a small albumin nanoparticle that is now used for a number of uh, cancers. Um, Nampaclitaxel delivers paclitaxel, otherwise undeliverable because it's very hydrophobic. And it is complex one paclitaxel molecule and albumin or two paclitaxel molecules and albumin. And it forms a small nanoparticle of around 100 nanometers that reaches the tumor. So it has a very smart mechanism so it uh, interacts with the receptors in the blood vessels cells and it is transposed reaching the tumors and then it interacts with another receptor and delivers paclitaxel specifically in the tumor. It's a very successful technology. It's a very important nanoparticle that uh, improves lives, saves lives and uh, um, it is, yeah, again, it's made paclitaxel safer to be delivered. Um, now, I'm going to do a little bit more what is now in the clinical trials. And uh, what is now in the clinical trial is a version of doxil, a version of doxorubicin, or the thermo of liposomal doxorubicin, that uh, is one of my favorite because uh, it can be activated from outside the body. So you can activate it with heat. If you apply heat, then the liposome is releasing the drug doxorubicin all at once in the tumor. So uh, it can uh, prevent the, um, 
exposure of the body to the cytotoxic, but release the drug only in the tumor. And this is exciting. So again, it's a technology that it is in phase three clinical trials. And so far there was some success and uh, uh, some, uh, of course, some failures, but mainly some success for the, with this technology. The technology is combined with uh, uh, hyperthermia techniques, ablative techniques of uh, RF radiofrequency ablation, which is ablates the center of the tumor. But what thermodetox does is that it is coming from the surrounding blood vessels around the tumor and is released locally. And this way, it can prevent the micrometastasis around the main tumor to turn into tumors and have a recurrent tumor. So the recurrency of the, these tumors is practically nothing. So this is actually a mechanism of action. And what if we have a look a sneak preview in the future, we can see that we can do all of this work remotely without no invention, with no invention, uh, uh, no invasion. So in that case, we apply uh, ultrasound concentrically, um, non-invasively, and this ultrasound will increase the temperature only in one tiny location, as it is shown here in the concentric area, and making the liposome to release the drug immediately. So this way we can estimate um, 100 times more dose in the tumor compared to uh, non-normal liposomes. So this is another advantage of this technologies of the nanomedicine. It's activatable, it is triggerable, it's responsive, um, it is safe. So overall, this type of technology has a good future. And another technology that I found also quite exciting, uh, nanobiotics, another technology that from a French company. And what they have done is they have done an exotic type nanoparticle, a half oxide nanoparticle, a high Z atom nanoparticle that is uh, entering into the uh, tumors. And now it is making those tissue, those tumors um, super sensitive to radiotherapy. And as a result, these tumors need less radiotherapy. Therefore, it's becoming much safer. So overall, I think uh, that nanomedicine in the clinic, nanomedicine has reached the clinic. Uh, it is here. It is yeah, with everyone. We all know about nanoparticles now, uh, but it can make better, safer disease treatments. And we can, we always employ or invent new mechanisms of actions regarding these nanoparticles, more, uh, more targeted, safer. Um, nanomedicines and nanoparticles interact with cell components definitely in a better way than plain drugs. And we have interaction with non-invasive interaction. And who knows, maybe in the future, we can activate nanoparticles within our body just with a mobile phone. Um, so nanotechnology is here to stay. Nanomedicine is here to stay. And I'm very happy that I had give you, given you this short preview of my opinion about the successes of nanomedicine. Thank you.